Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to show you how to lay out a website. This is the most common skill that I see you guys asking for. And today, over the next series of videos, I'm going to show you how to create a pretty complicated layout. Now, I did this in cooperation with somebody else that had wanted a website layout. And this was my first concept. And this is extremely complicated, as you can see here. But I created this all inside Illustrator, and all it is is boxes and lines and text and all these other different things. Now, of course, if you can't afford Illustrator, you should definitely check out Inkscape at inkscape.org. It's free, and it is very, very, very similar to Illustrator, and you can definitely create anything I'm showing you here inside of Inkscape. I started off with this basic design that you see here on the left side of the screen and after a bunch of different changes we ended up coming to this final design that you see here. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create all of this from scratch. I haven't done any of the HTML or anything from it so this is all going to come straight from my head. Basically the only things I've done ahead of time is I've taken this one picture here, this picture, this picture, this picture, and this logo up here and I saved them in a folder right like that and then I added this one little image right here and then I'm going to show you how to take just these couple images here and create everything else that you see on the screen totally 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 from scratch. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is I used a font here that isn't very common and let's just blow it up here on the screen so it's a little bit bigger. All right so I'm using this font right here and just to check out what that font is it's Open Sans. So if I want to be able to use a font that's a little bit nicer than normal what I do is I go to Google Web Fonts and let's just put our little image here on the left side of the screen and then here what I'm gonna do is I know this is a sans serif font so I'm gonna get rid of serif as an option and I'm gonna get rid of handwriting as an option and then hit OK and this is just a google.com forward slash web fonts and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just cycle through all these different images that are here on my screen all these different fonts until I find one that I like once I find one that is very similar to what I have here on the screen actually it's gonna be even cooler and nicer than what I have here on the screen I come to PT Sans Narrow now if I want to be able to use this font on my website I'm just gonna come over here to quick use and click on that and I'm gonna come down here to where this link is I'm gonna select it and copy it and then I can exit out of Illustrator because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to jump into my basic text editor. This is where I'm going to be building the entire layout that I just showed you on the screen. And I just have all of this text. All, there's a link to all of this underneath of this video. You can get a hold of all this text. But this is the standard way that I always start a website, so there's no reason to type it all out. I just copy and paste it myself, so you should do likewise. I'm also going to have all of the styling for the style sheet inside of this one thing. I'm, of course, going to change that later on. But I'm doing this just so I can show you everything on the screen all at one time. Now I'm going to take that piece of code that I just grabbed from Google Web Fonts and I'm going to paste it inside of here right like that. So now I'm going to be able to use that font anywhere I want inside of my web page. And over here on the right side you're going to see everything develop and then I have the actual web page that I'm going to be trying to create over here and stick it over here for now. And what I do is I have all those images and everything saved so what I basically have to do is just create a whole bunch of boxes and then put all the images and all the different things that I want into the proper box. That's it. That's what website design is. So so down inside of body and I'm going to give myself space here jump down inside of here and I know that I want a giant box to go around everything here on the screen when I use boxes I normally use what's called a div which is just a box that's all it is so I'm gonna create div and I'm gonna give it an ID because there's only gonna be one page wrapper that's gonna go around the whole entire content of the entire web page so whenever you're only gonna use something once you give it an ID whenever you're gonna use something multiple times you're gonna use a class okay we'll get more into that so don't worry about it if that's at all confusing now whenever we create a div or a box we have to close the box to keep everything inside of it. So there is your page wrapper, and that's just what goes around every single thing that's on the page. Now I'm going to indent, and over here on the left side of the screen, you can see we have what is called a header. That's this part up here. So what I got to do is I got to create a box for that header. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create another div, and there's only going to be one header, so I call it an ID, and I name it header, right like that. And then every time I create a new div, I of course close it off. And another thing that's really good to do is to put a little notation here so that you know whenever the div closes which div it is. So I'm going to say end of page wrapper and that's how you make a comment inside of HTML and I could also copy this and put it at the end of this guy end of 
and we'll just say header, right? So now I know where all my divs close. Okay, so now what do I gotta do? Well, I have an image here, and I have a slogan here, and I have a little search box. So I gotta create all of those things first. Well, I'm gonna first put this image in here, this logo. So I'm gonna say image source is equal to, and I'm gonna say where it is located. It's located in the images folder, and it's called logo2, and it's a ping file. That's all I gotta do there. And I'm gonna give it alt text, and I'm gonna call it social voice logo, right like that. And then I'm gonna define that I want it to have a width equal to, and I figured this out inside of Illustrator by measuring everything out, but I don't measure everything exactly. I just pretty much just jump in here and start creating things. So this was the basic size for this logo. So I'm just sticking to the sizes that I have. And I'm going to give it an ID because there's only going to be one logo, and it's going to be called logo. And then I'm going to close off the image tag with a forward slash. And this is all HTML strict, as you can see here. And it's going to validate as HTML strict whenever I'm done with everything. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Well, what's another thing that is very common on a web page? Well, there's a title. In this situation, we don't have a title. I don't like that fact, but either way, in the future, we may add a title. So I'm going to create a blog title, and I'm eventually going to turn this into a WordPress theme also, but I'm going to create a basic website beforehand. So I'm going to give it an H1 tag because it's going to be the biggest screen thing on the screen, and I'm going to call it blog title, but if I wanted something to be here, that's where it would go. But in this situation, I don't have it, and I don't need it, but I'm still going to create it because eventually I think I might use it. Then I need a slogan, so I'm going to create a paragraph. ID is equal to blog slogan, right like that, and then I just type in my slogan, your source for mobile social media marketing. So there's my slogan. That's what's up here in the right side of the screen. If you can't see this, view it in full screen HD. It's an HD movie. All right, then I want to put a search box inside of here. Now this is actually just going to be a placeholder for now, but either way I want to create it just so I have everything laid out. So I'm going to create another div, and because there's only going to be one search box, I'm going to give it an ID search, and I'm going to go box like that. And then if I want to put a text box inside of here, I'm going to go input type is equal to text. And I'm going to say name is equal to, let's just say search, and size is equal to 25 pixels. Then I want to close off that input box and input, and I'm going to say type is equal to, and it's going to be a submit button that's going to send in for the search, and value is equal to search, which is supposed to be in all uppercase letters. And then I close that off, and then whenever I'm done with that, I close off my div. See? Div, 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 paragraph tag. Everything's closed off, and everything's in a nice little box. And the header section is all set up to be working here. And just keep this in your mind as how that is all set up. And now I'm going to show you how to build everything here right on the screen using style sheets. So jump up here into the style section, and I know this isn't good form to do everything on one page, but I'm doing it this way so you guys can learn. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define anything I'm going to do with page wrapper because that wraps the whole entire website. Okay? And this is how you do this in cascading style sheets. Because it is an ID, I'm going to put a hash symbol in front of it. If it's a class, it's going to be a period, but it's not, so it's a hash symbol. Just through watching this and you'll eventually digest it and really understand it. Well, I want to define the font that I want to use on the whole entire web page. So I'm thinking it's going to be 14 pixels by 1.4, that's line height, distance between the characters and then I want to say PT Sans Narrow. And why am I saying that? Because that's the name of it, PT Sans Narrow. That was defined by Google. That's its name. But since there's spaces inside of here, i got to put it inside of quotes. And then Sans Serif is going to be the default that every single browser has. And then I'm going to say that I want this to have a width equal to 1,000 pixels. That is how you do that. Now that's going to be the width of the entire web page. And then I'm going to say that I want my background color to be equal to white. So that's defined. Now if I want everything to be centered on the screen, all I have to do is say margin left colon is going to be auto. In essence, that's telling it to be in the center if margin right is equal to auto also. And there you go. That's all I'm going to define for the whole entire web page at this point in time. So now i got to jump into the header section. 
And let's say that I want to make the header, again, close these curly brackets, and I want it to have a height that is equal to 127 pixels because that's what Illustrator told me it should be. And I'm gonna make the width equal to 1000 pixels because that's my page wrapper and I want everything to fit. Well, the next thing I gotta do is place my logo, as you can see right here. And I'm gonna use this as a guide. This is just a JPEG of this whole entire thing. Now remember, there's only one logo and I have to try to make it fit where it should fit. So I'm gonna say that I wanna position it relative to where it is right now. And let's just look and see where it is right now. So if we jump over here, and you can see that everything is right here in not the proper order. So what I gotta do is move these things around. So again, let's jump into logo. Now I wanna position it. I'm telling it I wanna tell it where to go. And I wanna position it relative to where it is currently. Well, I don't really hate where it is currently, so I'm not gonna have to change that many things. What it say I wanna indent it? Uh, 15 pixels, just for the heck of it. File save it, reload, and it moved just a little bit. So I indented it a little bit from the outside of the page. That's all I did right there. Now the other thing's gonna be a little bit more different difficult because now I'm going to change the blog slogan and I got to position it in the upper right hand corner in a way that's going to look nice. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say position because I want to position it relative to where it is currently and I have no idea what this is going to be but I do know it's going to have a width of 240 pixels because I measured that inside of Illustrator. And then I need to define both its position from the left side of the screen. From here, I'm gonna position it. And then also I need to know how I wanna position it from the top of the screen. I'm gonna have to define those two things right here on the screen. So let's shrink this down so I can fit it on the page. And let's say from the left, I wanna put it in there, um, I don't know, 800 pixels. So this is just me guessing, and this is how I design web pages. I just guess a lot. And then let's say I want to take it 100 pixels from the top. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see that it's off, it's down too much, and it's not looking too good here. So let's jump over here and let's try to fix that up. So let's go blog slogan and left, uh, let's say 700. And then from the top, let's say 120. I don't know. I'll save it. Oop. Okay, so it's looking a little bit better here. It's kind of lined up nicely with this guy, and I'm putting negative 20 in here, remember, because I was trying to move it upwards. If you want to move something upwards relative to where it was, you have to use negative numbers. If you want to move something downwards, you have to use, or to the right, you have to use positive numbers. Okay, so from the top, it's not looking too bad. I just want to nudge it up just a little bit more, so if I'll save, and it's looking pretty good right around there. Let's maybe even... 24, I don't know. And another thing that sort of helps sometimes is if I go page wrapper and just temporarily put in a border so that I know where that's at. And I'm gonna say five pixels, solid, and then black as my border for my page wrapper. File save, reload it, and then you can start to see where all this stuff is putting itself together. All right, so this is kind of making me think I'd like to move this farther to the right, but of course Internet Explorer is such a broken piece of garbage that if I move this too far to the right, it's gonna clip it off. Even though it should fit, Internet Explorer doesn't know how to work, so I'm gonna have to leave some space here. Let's just say for now that I'm going to increase this to 715 and see how we work out. All right, so we'll leave it in that general vicinity. Well, what do I have now? Well, I have my search box down here, so I have to define what that's going to look like. I just type in search box. And what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to move this guy up into here. I want to position it again, relative. And from the left side of the screen, let's say I look at what 700 looks like. And then from the top of the screen, it's basically I want to put it up here. So that looks like that's right around 100 pixels. And I do know the width because I checked that inside of Illustrator. And I think it's about 200 pixels. A lot of guesswork. Well, that wasn't right at all because why? Top. This should have been negative instead of positive. So let's just type in negative 80. File save it. Whoop, look at that. It's starting to look pretty sharp. Except search button is down here instead of next to the search area where I want it to go. So what's that mean? I got to increase the width a little bit on this guy. So let's just say I change this to 230. File save, reload. There we go. Now it's starting to fit in here a little bit better. And then from the left side of the screen, let's say that I want to move it over 20 pixels so that it's lined up real nice with what's up here. So let's reload.
reload it, and eh, it needs to go a little bit more. So let's say 7.30, reload it. Yeah, it's starting to look like it's just about perfect here. File save, reload it, and there it is perfect. I got my header section all defined and everything's all lined up real nice and neat inside of here. So what do I have to do now? Well, I have to put my menu in, which is right here. I already have a menu system that I always use all of the time, and I'm gonna continue using it in this presentation. And I just have that saved over inside of here, and I'm just gonna copy it because it's gonna be a temporary placeholder that I'm not gonna use in my final work. So I'm just going to copy this menu. It's all finished up here down to the div, of course. Again, it's a box just like everything else. Then I'm going to scroll down here right where it says end of header. Boink paste that in there, reload this, and you can see that it showed up there on the screen, but it's missing the CSS code that is needed here. So what I'm gonna have to do is scroll up a little bit and I have all of the CSS code saved in a CSS file, which is the way you should always do it. And I'm just gonna link to it, right like that. And then you go style, sheet, h reference, and that's going to allow me to point at the style sheet where it's stored. And I have a tutorial in which I show you how to make this menu. I'll provide a link to it on the screen. That's why I'm not getting into it. And then also there is a JavaScript file that's associated with this. So I'm gonna go text forward slash JavaScript. Source is equal to includes forward slash menu dot js forward slash script. Make sure you always close off all the different tags. And if we file save that and reload this, you can see that nothing happened. <laughs> That's what happens whenever I do all this stuff completely out of my head. What I forgot to do here is put this little forward slash in there. So file save it, reload. And now you can see there the whole entire menu system is set up inside of this guy. Well, that's all I have time for today. Uh, in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this whole entire left sidebar. And then we'll move on to create all these other different things and then provide a footer and fix things as problems come about as I lay this all out. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.